Well, thanks to you guys for sticking around during the weekend of fall break. <laughs> the weekend starts Thursday night, right? Anyhow, um, today, today I'll, I'll talk about how rockets work and do most of the rocket demonstrations. Uh, before I go on to rockets, so I, I wanted to take a little time to, to sort of finish bicycles. That's sort of the, the key point that I was working up to. I, that I, I put it in the lecture video, but just to say it, make sure it's clear to all of you. I, I showed you that the tricycles are stable at rest. When you start moving forward fast and tr try to make hard turns, they risk flipping over. And bicycles are unstable at rest, but if you start moving forward, they, 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 they are able to stay up. What I have to do is, is ultimately say, why bicycles fix the problem that tricycles have? Namely, that when you make sharp turns, tricycles flip, whereas bicycles don't. And so that's where I'm going to go, is, is try to explain. And it involves leaning the bicycle, and that's the, at least the jargon term for it. When you, when, you, when you go through a turn on a bicycle, or just when you're running, if you run around a corner, you don't stay upright. You deliberately lean toward the inside of the turn. If you don't, you will flip over, just like a tricycle. But, but uh, it's just second nature to, to, to lean, and I'll explain why, why to lean. Um, before I do that, let me, let me point out with the, with the tricycles, the problem the tricycle has, it, it does have static stability. So here's my four-legged tricycle again, handy dandy. When, when you uh, go around a, a sharp turn, it will, it will tip up onto two, wheel, uh, two wheels. The tricycle actually will go onto two wheels also. And that tip will summon up the influences that try to return it to its stable equilibrium. So, so the, the tricycle will try not to flip over. And it will use its static stability, the stability that it has at rest, to try to do that. The issue is those same influences that are, that are, at, that are appearing, and when I say influence, you know, it's, it's forces and torques. It's complicated exactly what's pushing where and how. Those influences that come up are also the ones that are responsible for getting the, 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 the stuff up, up on top to turn with the bicycle's wheels. The, the, the forces that turn the bicycle, the tricycle, act at its wheels, and they make the wheels accelerate to the side, which is part of turning. But you got to get the, the rider to accelerate to the side, too. Where do those forces and influences come from? Well, they come, they come from the static stability, the, the fact that the tricycle wants to return to being upright. And that, at low speed turn, for a low speed turn, or you know, not too tight a turn, that'll do it. That will, get the, that will introduce enough sideways force on the rider to bend their path so they go with the bike, tricycle. So static stability is, is, remains very important even at high speeds and during turns. And this is true of cars as well. When a car is turning left on, on the highway, it starts to tip. And the wheel may not leave the ground, but, it, but it's starting to, to, to reduce its traction and everything. The support force is going down on the, on the inside. And that's beginning to summon up these restoring forces. And the restoring forces take the riders in the top of the car through the turn. If you go too fast, though, those restoring forces just aren't strong enough. They're, they're limited. There's only, I mean, there, there is a restoring, when I let go, there will be restoring influences that will push it back towards upright, but they're not infinitely strong, and they cause a certain amount of local acceleration of the, of the parts of the, of the tricycle. But if the acceleration is three times faster than that, those forces aren't enough, and the tricycle will, will just flip over, pop. All right? Uh, and as I said, you, this static stability gets uh, less effective as, as the object gets taller, and, it, and, it, and its base of support gets smaller. So this is why if you're really going to make, if you want to make hard turns on the road, get a car with a very low center of gravity. Um, so this is why a lot of the, the, the race cars and sports cars, they're low to the ground, sitting on wheels that are out as far as they can tolerate. How about so, that, so that's the story of the uh, three or more wheeled vehicles. They can't, they, they, they have to stay upright during a turn, and they have to use static stability to get them around the turn without flipping. Bicycles. 
With a bicycle, you don't have static stability. That's not, that's not going to appear when you tip to, to, to help rescue you. It's sorry. You're just, you, 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 by itself, you would flip over. So if you try to take a turn while remaining completely upright, and you begin to tip because of these inertial problems, you're just going to tip. You will, you'll just flip over. How do, you, how do you deal with that? You deal with that by leaning the bicycle toward the inside of the turn. And if you haven't watched other people do it or watched yourself do it, you know, pay attention. When people go around turns, they do not stay upright. If they did, they would flip. And again, they would flip where their, where their head and body go toward the outside of the turn. And I, I hope that that expression, outside of the turn, is now pretty clear to you. If it's not, tell me. Ask me. You okay with it? Okay. So, if you stay upright and go around a turn, you tip over towards the outside of the turn. Um, so what's the, what can you do? Well, why don't you try leaning toward the inside of the turn? If you lean toward the inside of the turn and then fail to make the turn, just, just, just go straight. Imagine you, you, you get prepared to lean into the turn. You start leaning, and then you go straight. You will tip over again you will tip over this time toward the inside of the turn that, that you forgot to, to do. So, so long and short of it is that if you turn without leaning, you will flip over toward the outside of the turn. If you lean without turning, you will flip over toward the inside of the turn. You follow those words, I hope? So do them both. If you do them both at the same time, you lean the bicycle, and you have to pick the right lean, and you learn very quickly how to pick the right lean. Um, you know, this is part of the, you, you never forget how to ride a bicycle. You, you, this is part of the motor muscle memory and stuff. You learn just how far to lean it, so that the two tendencies, to flip over to the outside of the turn because of inertia, and to flip over toward the inside of the turn because you're tilted and gravity is exerting torque on you, they cancel. And the result is you go around the turn at a steady tilt. And when you get done with a the turn, then of course, uh, you're not, if you're not turning anymore, don't lean, so you go back to upright. And in principle, you can take a turn as tight as you like on a bicycle or, or a two-wheeled vehicle if you lean far enough. And then you watch motorcycle racers and stuff, they, they, they lean so far that they're worried about scuffing off their, their, the, the side of their leg. They're, they're almost horizontal. They're leaning as hard as they can. There is another limit that shows up, and that is traction. If they, eventually, that, that turn requires so much friction force from the ground that they begin to skid. They can't, they can't summon up that much sideways force from the ground by way of friction. But as long as you don't skid, you can turn, take a turn as hard as you like. All right? And that's why we ride bicycles rather than tricycles. We, they don't have the flip over problem. Any questions about bicycles, tricycles? I'll throw one two cents observation that's kind of interesting, to me, at least to me, is how do you make the bicycle begin to lean before going into a turn? I say you have to lean into the turn, but like how do you do that? How do you make the bicycle tip to the side? Which, you know, it seems like a bad idea, but it's actually a good idea as you're going to turn. And you do that actually by steering the wrong way very quickly and very briefly. So if you watch yourself, bicycling. You're bicycling along and you're going to turn, gonna, if I'm bicycling along to your right and I'm going to turn away from you, I don't just turn the wheel to the left and, and, and lean left. I, I got to get the lean going. I actually briefly steer to the right and then I steer to the left. You kind of, you just kind of swoop into it. And this, the brief steering the wrong way tips the bicycle and gets you started into the lean that you need. And you do the reverse coming out of it. But it's, it's, watch yourself go through through fast turns, and you'll see you do it, just your muscle memory does this. You don't even think about it. Of course, if you watch yourself do it and think too much, you'll crash. Um, it's like trying to hit baskets while you're thinking about the physics of it. I can't even hit the backboard when I'm thinking about it. All right. Rockets, then. So let's, rockets actually is a very simple idea, a, a very uh, misunderstood for a long time. I, I think I still have in the book this famous New York Times editorial uh, comment about Robert Goddard trying to launch rockets into space and, and, and 
how stupid he is because there, in space there's nothing to react against. Action, reaction, and of course any, any high school student knows that you have to have something to react against and there's nothing out there. Uh, the editorial is totally wrong and I guess, you know, hopefully when you're done here you'll understand exactly why a rocket works. It's very, very simple. The rocket propels itself in one direction by throwing stuff that it already has on board in the other direction. What's the stuff it has on board? Fuel. I mean, just, just a, a catch-all name for it. It doesn't have to literally be, be fuel, but it, can be, it, it, it could be the furniture. And you throw it out that way, that would work too. But to get the best propulsion, they, they use very high energy chemical fuel, fuels, fuels that have a lot of chemical potential energy. Because in addition to going off in one direction and thereby carrying momentum, they also go off at high speed and therefore carry off energy. And so, sad but true, rockets, rockets really want momentum out of their fuel, forward momentum. But they, they alas, have to give the fuel also, as it goes out, uh, kinetic energy. And that's, that's unfortunate. It, it, it would be nice if they didn't have to do it. So the basic idea is, you know, just to illustrate that, we've got new medicine balls, yeah, brand new. The previous one had been here since I arrived here, back in the, shortly after they booted out the, the dinosaurs. And um, somebody recently, so it was like 30 years old, you know, so somebody dropped it from the catwalk onto the, onto the cement. And met, moral of the story is old, old, old medicine balls do not bounce very well when dropped that far. It basically played beanbag, thunk, poof, and all, you know, all the stuffing came out. So yes, very good. All right, I won't do that with these guys. I won't test their limits. So are they bouncy at all? Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, so they're, they're big one, little one. I'll try a little one first, because I just can't. I'm gonna stand again where it says do not stand. All right, there we go. And I have almost no momentum. I'm slowly giving it away to the floor by way of issue, you know, frictions and stuff. Okay, I now have zero momentum. Actually, the team, uh, Medicine Ball and me, to, as a team, we have no mo momentum. And I'm on a wheelie cart that essentially decouples me from the ground so that I can't get any momentum out of the ground either. You know, I can do this dancing back and forth, and I, I'm not, well, I'm drifting a little bit, but, I, but I'm getting almost no momentum out of the ground. And you can imagine, I'm on super slippery surface, like just can't get any at all. The fact that I have zero momentum sounds like that, that I can never get moving, not without something else coming in here and giving me some momentum to the right, for example. But actually, I've got one thing I can do. I can, if, I, if I'm really not, not so attached to the medicine ball, that is, I don't care whether I still have it later in the story, I can throw it away. And what I'll do is I will throw it to your left as fast as I can, which isn't very fast, alas, because it's like, you know, there's a reason why these are exercise things. Uh, you know, it's heavier than the bowling ball. I'm gonna throw it to the left very fast, and we can look at what ha what's going on from two perspectives. First, in terms of force. If I push it to the left, it has to push back on me equally hard in the opposite direction. That's Newton's third law. So if I push it to the left, it will push me to the right, and because that's the only horizontal force on me, I'm going to accelerate toward the right. So that's the force discussion of, of what's going to happen. I'm going to get rocket propelled, yeah, okay? Yeah, the momentum, and I'm here holding a stupid ball. Um, okay, the, when I throw the ball to the left, the other way you can think of it is in terms of momentum. We start with zero momentum. We're not moving. Momentum is our mass times our velocity. Velocity zero, we're not, no momentum. But we can redistribute that zero in an interesting way. I will give the ball part of our team leftward momentum, and it will give me an equal amount of rightward momentum. The sum of our total, you know, our total momentum is still zero, as it has to be, because nobody, we didn't exchange any with the, with the world around us, but we, that zero now is, is broken into two parts. One, the leftward moving fuel, and the rightward moving spacecraft, me. Okay, so let's see how, can I pull this off? Decently. Yay! Off I go. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm roughly, <laughs> thanks. I'm roughly 10 times the mass of that guy. 
So it carries away its dose of momentum by traveling about 10 times faster than I travel. Because its momentum is its mass times its velocity. It's got small mass, so its velocity's got to be big. Um, I've got big mass, I've got to have small velocity. So off we go, like that. And I think you get the idea, I, mean, I could throw, try throwing the bigger one, but it's not going to do much different. But that's rocket propulsion, is you start with a rocket with parts of their, therein that you don't, care to, you, don't, you don't need to hang on to, you're willing to throw out in one direction. And you keep throwing them out in that one direction, and they carry momentum off with them in that direction, and you end up with momentum in the other direction. And now everything else is just details. So in, in, a, in a viable rocket that's destined for any, anything more than like the right wall of this room, you need better, better equipment. You need some, you, you probably want to start with more fuel, more stuff you can throw out. I started with about 10% stuff I could throw out. The ball is about 10% of my weight, so it's you know, sort of in the vicinity of 10% of the team. So I threw out 10% of our total weight and I ended up moving forward not very fast. If, if we started the other way around, if the, if, if the spacecraft were the ball and it threw me out, um, it would end up going much faster as you saw it. Of course, it was going a lot faster than I am. So a first observation is that space-bound that, that space rockets when, at launch uh, are, are largely fuel. They need tons of mass. They need to be a, a substantial fraction of the mass needs to be expendable. They can throw it. And it it's a mass issue. It's not a gravity, not a weight issue. It's nothing to do with gravity at the moment. It's just you, if you're going to throw stuff out, you need to be able to throw out as much mass as you possibly can. And so if you think of rockets that you've watched uh, launch over the years, I, mean, it's, it's, I guess it's less popular than it was. When I was a kid, uh, I mean, this, these were the big deal on any given uh, year even. Like, wow, gonna, there's going to be a launch today. Wow. So we watched them all. Um, and nowadays it's kind of ho-hum. But um, those rockets are, are, are basically big bottles of fuel with a little bit of hardware around for people, perhaps. All right? Lots of mass. Second thing is, if I could have thrown that ball twice as fast as I threw it, it would have carried away twice as much momentum, and I would have ended up with twice as much momentum in the other direction, and I would have moved faster. So it's obviously to the advantage of a rocket to throw its fuel away as fast as it possibly can, the highest velocity it can, and therefore the most momentum it can take away uh, possible. So, so don't use somebody throwing. You know, yes, you could sit with a box of tennis balls and a rack, smack balls out the back of the, uh, the, the, the rocket, but you do much better with, with chemicals and reactions and flames and stuff and shoot the fuel out much faster. And modern rockets, the ones that are, that are that, again, are space bound, the fuel leaves the engines, and the engines are designed to really extract as much, to, to put as much momentum into, those, into, the, into the burned fuel as possible. The fuel comes out at, at, at something like three to five kilometers per second. Just unbelievable speeds. Way faster, faster than the speed of sound, uh, faster, uh, uh, high-powered bullet speeds are faster, really, really fast. And so they're using the mass they have efficiently. That's you know, wh why efficiently. The ro rockets, unlike airplanes, airplanes swim through the air. That is, they grab the air. We'll see. We'll talk about airplanes down down the road. But airplanes, essentially, and particularly with a propeller, it's kind of straightforward. The propeller essentially re reaches out, grabs the air, and throws it backwards, and grabs some more and throws it backwards. It goes in a circle and all, but that, the details we'll deal with. But it's basically throwing, passing air backwards, pushing it, and having the air push it forward in, in, in response. It, it's not, not, not crucial that it, that it really use every kilogram of, the, of air that it throws backwards efficiently because there's always another kilogram of air in front. It can keep grabbing new ones. So when, when I say it's swimming, it's like, like a swimmer. Same thing, you grab the water, you throw it backwards. You grab the water, throw it backwards. That's how you swim through water. The, the mass isn't precious. You go, there's always more ahead of you. With a rocket, mass is precious because you're not using the, the mass that's around you to throw it backwards. You're using the mass you have on board. And you only have so much. And once you've thrown it out, it's gone forever. 
So rockets try to use their, their mass, namely their, specifically their fuel, uh, as efficiently as they can. They throw it out as fast as they possibly can uh, to get as much forward momentum out of it as possible. So at this point, any, any questions about the, the propulsion idea? We want all the details of how they, how they manage to eke out the best, you know, the most speed momentum into the fuel, but it's not so critical. More critical is sort of the issue of how fast can a rocket go, given this idea. And the answer to that is there's no real, there's no fundamental limit to how fast a rocket can go. It can go faster than the speed at which it throws its fuel out. Um, that seem, it seems like there should be a limit. You can't go faster than the fuel, but you can. Uh, I should point out that once you do go faster than the, fuel, the speed with which you throw fuel out, the fuel that you're throwing out, as viewed by a person standing on the ground, or just motionless in the original way things were, they, they look at that fuel you're throwing out and they say, the rocket's going super fast, it's throwing the fuel backwards, but the fuel actually is still going forward. Because the rocket was going, say, twice as fast as the, as the fuel exhaust velocity, and you throw the fuel out, the fuel now is going out one times as fast as the exhaust velocity, but in the wrong direction. Can you picture the idea that, that, that if the rocket is moving along super fast and it throws the fuel out, there goes the fuel, there goes the fuel, it's still, it's still moving to the, to the right as you view it. The fuel is still moving to the right, even though I'm throwing it as hard as I can to the left. So where that, where that goes is, is as once you start traveling sort of in the vicinity of or faster than the fuel exhaust velocity, um, it's not doing you as much good to, to run your rocket engine as it did originally. Uh, as it, when, when you first started right at launch and we're throwing fuel out, it's, it's moving very fast as viewed by the people on the ground. And it's moving very fast in the direction opposite the one you want to go. Once you're going very fast already, though, that fuel isn't doing as much. Uh, it's, it's not moving backwards as fast as viewed by people on the ground. Yeah, Dave. Is it still accelerating at the same rate? For every, uh, for every, yes, it's still, it's still giving backward momentum to this stuff. So is it still, it's still pushing just as hard? Yeah, it's still accelerating. And actually, because it's, it, the, the, the ship weighs less, has less mass, it accelerates more, more effectively. But it's, where, where, where's the, I can't think off the top of my head exactly how to explain why. It's, it's not getting as, as, as big a, forward effect as, as it would if it could throw all of its fuel out at the instant it started, at full speed, that would propel it in the other direction with the most possible forward momentum. The fact that it's throwing out the fuel as it's accelerating reduces the momentum it carries with it because it isn't able to give the fuel it ejects as much backward momentum per kilogram as it, as it would have if it could throw it out all from motion, from rest. If I throw, if I throw one, a thousand kilograms of fuel backwards at one kilometer per second. That's you know, a, a thousand kilogram kilometers per second of momentum. Whoosh, off it goes. And I have, I have what, the, the, the same amount in the other direction. But if I throw 500, my numbers are going to kill us. But if I throw half of it out at, at full speed, and then now I'm moving, and I throw the second half out while I'm moving fast, that second half doesn't carry off as much momentum as the first half. Because it, it doesn't move as fast to the left. It's, it's coming out of a moving vehicle, and therefore isn't moving backwards at the full speed anymore, as viewed by people on the ground. So I don't end up, with, when the story's over, I don't end up with as much rightward momentum as if I threw it all out in the first instant. I hope that's vaguely followable. The result is that there's a, what's called the rocket equation, which tells you basically how fast the rocket will go given, based on a few, a few details, how fast the fuel is thrown out and what fraction of the vehicle at launch was fuel. So if you know those two numbers and you know how fast the fuel is thrown out, it will tell you how fast the vehicle is going after it's used all its fuel. And that, if it, if it started at 50-50 fuel, it goes to a certain speed. If it starts 90-10 fuel, it goes to a, a greater speed. If it goes to 99%, 1%, 1%, 90% fuel, 1% vehicle, it goes to a, yet another speed. 
that doesn't increase as fast as it would if it all threw, it, threw all the fuel out at once. I mean, it's not very enlightening, but, but it, what's the bottom line, the thing that you, that you might remember, is it gets harder and harder to get a rocket significantly faster than its own fuel exhaust velocity. So that rockets that, that need to go three or four times as fast as the exhaust need to start almost entirely fuel. And this is the case for most rockets that are bound for, I wouldn't say space, but bound for orbit or beyond the Earth. To get to space, all you have to do is go straight up about 100 kilometers. And this you can do with a relatively straightforward rocket. Um, the, 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 the earliest of the space tourism may well be, be this sort of approach. Just shoot a rocket straight up and go as high as you can. It'll go up higher and higher and higher. The rocket will eventually run out of fuel. Uh, you'll coast for a little while up, like a ball thrown up, and then you'll slow down because you're pulled down by gravity. It's still up there. It's, you know, it's still active. You'll come to a stop, peak height for a moment, but you're accelerating downward, and you'll come back down and, and return to the Earth, hopefully safely. Okay? That, that you can do. I mean, that, that sort of any, I mean, Anybody could do it. It's, it's doable. I mean, amateurs could, could do that. To keep a rocket up there, though, is a lot harder. Why? Because you know, what goes up must come down kind of stuff. If you, if you throw it up there you know, with rocket propulsion, uh, you can get it nice and high, but it's gonna, once the engine runs out of fuel, you, it's going to fall. And it's going to just, now it's just the, the physics of a, of a falling object. It's a little more complicated because gravity does, does get weaker with distance from the center of the Earth. So, so once you're a couple of hundred miles up, gravity is slightly weaker than it was down here. So what do most rocket launches do? They don't go straight up. So you, you, you can see straight up is a way to visit space for a few minutes, maybe. But that's it. You're not going to stay. If you go up a little bit and then, then start going sideways and concentrate less on trying to get, gain altitude and more on trying to go fast sideways, you can, you can get to orbit. How does that work? You have to go up enough to get out of the Earth's atmosphere because the Earth's air, air resistance is, is, is no good for spacecraft. You, 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 you come back down to Earth because of air resistance. So get out of the atmosphere. That's, I mean, that's part of the story. But beyond that, just go sideways faster and faster and faster. And if you go sideways fast enough, something strange happens in the falling process where once the engine, engine stops, run out of fuel, engine stops of a rocket, if it's going sideways, then it's pulled toward the center of the Earth by gravity, but gravity doesn't just speed it up downward, it, it bends its path. Remember, an object that is experiencing a force to its side that is, to, to, a moving object that experiences a force to one side doesn't just make, make a sharp turn, you know, like this. Instead, if the velocity is that way and the acceleration is that way, it, it, it travels in an arc, right? A carousel was, was a particularly special case where it's going at a steady speed around the circle and it's accelerating right toward the center of that circle. So an object that's accelerating toward, this, toward a center can travel steadily in a circle. And a spacecraft can do that. It can accelerate steadily toward the center of the Earth and yet travel in a circle. So this, the, basically inertia is trying to make it go straight. Gravity is trying to bend its path so that it comes toward the center of the Earth. And they negotiate a settlement where it travels in a, in a continuous circle around the Earth. And that, that is a circular orbit. Um, my my other, you know, other ways of describing it is if you're, so you're out of the Earth's atmosphere and you're going sideways fast, if you go especially fast, you, you just basically travel in a straight line. Gravity might be pulling on you, but you're going so fast that it has almost no effect on you. It's like my banana the first day when I threw it against the wall, I think. Right? If you throw it fast enough, who cares about gravity? It just goes almost straight. So same thing with a rocket ship. If you throw it fast enough, it goes almost straight and just off into deep space. Forget the Earth. Um, if that, when that happens then, so inertia is dominating its motion. It's going into deep space. And if you think of, of its altitude, that is how far it is from the center of the Earth 
uh, minus the, the, the radius of the Earth, it's going to higher altitude. If you go there with a tape measure, a measure from the rocket now to the surface of the Earth, and then you measure a little later from the rocket now to the surface of the Earth, it's going to higher altitude because it's going straight and the Earth is bending. So inertia favors higher and higher altitude. On the other hand, if you go slow, if you go too slow, and, and take, take inertia from being the, the, the primary player to, to letting gravity be the prim, primary player, gravity favors bending the path of the, of, the, of the rocket toward the Earth, toward lower altitude. So you've got two extremes. At, at, high, at high speed sideways, an inertia wins, and the rocket goes straight to higher and higher altitude. At low, at low speeds, gravity wins, and the ship goes to lower and lower altitudes and lands. So go right in between. And that's what an orbit is doing, is it's, it's going between the inertial straight and the gravity arc down and hit, and it travels at constant altitude. It doesn't make any progress to the Earth. Uh, the idea that a bending thing can make no progress toward the Earth, a, an object whose path is bending makes no progress to the Earth, necessitates the, the, fact, uh, the, the recognition that the Earth is a, is a ball, right? So if you go sideways fast enough, if, I mean here, if I throw something sideways, it's going to hit the floor anyway. But if I throw it really fast sideways, and the floor is really, 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 really long, we discover the floor is not flat. It's actually arced. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's on a curved Earth. And so if I throw the ball fast enough, yeah, it's going it's gonna, it's gonna to fall, but, but, the, but the floor is going to bend downward also, following the curved Earth. And so orbits, the spacecraft is curving because of gravity, and the ground is curving because the Earth is a ball. And, and you make, make no progress toward it. All right? So orbits, orbits come in a variety of types. Uh, there's a question about, about energy in the, in the context of rockets. In, when, you, when you launch a rocket, so I'll, I'll come back, because this, this is actually an interesting question. I, I told you that energy is unfortunately gets involved in it uh, unavoidably. But when you launch a rocket and you begin to throw stuff one way in order to get it to push the other way. What you really want is the momentum, because the momentum that you receive dictates how fast you're moving and in, in, in what direction. You would love to get that momentum without giving away any of your precious energy. And could you do that? And actually, you could if, if instead of taking the fuel and throwing it out backwards, you grabbed stuff that you could reach, the launch pad, the, the gantry, this stuff, and you push it backwards, you can give it the, the, the leftward momentum, but because it doesn't move, you give it no energy. You're not doing any work on it. So, you can, so if there were a, 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 a long tower heading off into space, and the rocket, instead of throwing fuel down to get upward momentum, it grabbed the, the tower and, 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 and pushed it downward in order to get upward momentum, that would be a great advantage. It wouldn't give away any, any energy. You can't do that, unfortunately. Uh, instead, the rocket, ha the rocket doesn't have anything else to push on. It throws the fuel out. And because the fuel moves as it pushes, it does work on it. And it gives it energy. And the fuel carries away that energy as kinetic energy. And the, the, fuel, the burned fuel leaving a rocket carries away a, just a prodigious amount of energy. You know, megawatt hours of, of energy in a, in, a, in a space launch rocket. Um, they can't avoid it because they have to throw stuff out that does move. And they do do work on it as they throw it. Um, they just throw, basically the rocket scientists say, what the heck, you know, we can't avoid this. We're going to pour tons of energy into the, into the burned fuel as well. But so, you know, so what? You know, we'll buy more energy. I don't know how much it costs, essentially an energy cost, to, to load up a rocket for launch. But it's, it, it could easily be you know, thousands or millions of dollars just to, to create these high energy uh, uh, rocket fuels. Pack them full of energy, burn them all gone, 
Um, I'm sure the rockets, when they're, when they're operating, they're probably like, like a, a billion watts of, of power being, being consumed during launch. Is that okay? Uh, this actually is just, just a, more stuff that's useful to you guys. Anytime you propel yourself by grabbing stuff, propel yourself, which, which you can think of as, as trying to get forward momentum. Whenever you can, you've got a choice between grabbing stuff that will not move, like the roadway, or the, uh, the bottom of a, of a river, that's what you want to push on, because you can't do work on it. For, you, know, you can't do significant work on it, so it doesn't take away your energy. If you can't reach something that doesn't move, then you may have to push on something that moves. And when that happens, you'll give it energy, and that's too bad. Examples of things that manage to, that, that push on stuff that moves are swimmers. You're grabbing water, pushing it backwards. Ah, it moves, you give it energy. Uh, rowers, you, you, you're pushing on the water. Ah, it moves, you're giving it energy. Um, a, a, a boater with, well, yeah, I'm thinking boater with, with oars. Um, what's an alternative? You go, you go on a gondola in Venice, and the, the gondolier is pushing not on the water, they're pushing on the, on the bottom of the canal. It doesn't move. Ha! Ah, they don't give it energy, so that's more efficient. Airplanes, same thing, they're pushing on the air, it moves. Ah! And it takes away energy. Is that, is that okay? Given that, actually, um, if you, you want the forward momentum, you don't want to give the stuff you're pushing on uh, uh, a, a lot of energy, How, wh what can you do? Well, push on as much as you can, the biggest mass you possibly can grab. Because if you take a small mass of, for example, water, and, and to, to get a, uh, a one dose of forward momentum, if you've got only a little mass, you have to make it move very fast. Well, energy, the kinetic energy goes as a speed squared. So very fast means lots of energy. So don't take a little mass and throw it backwards. Take a big mass and throw it backwards. You get the same momentum with it, if it's 10 times the mass, you get the same forward momentum by throwing only one-tenth the velocity. So it's traveling only a tenth as fast as the little one. And that means that, that every kilogram in that tenth as fast block only has one one-hundredth the kinetic energy. Bottom line is you get the same forward momentum when you grab big stuff, but you don't give it the stuff as much energy as a result. And this explains why a swimmer wants to grab as much water as possible. A rower, grab as much water as possible. Airplane, grab, grab lots of air and push it backwards. Uh, you want it to leave going as slow as you can possibly deal with uh, in, in order to get your forward momentum. All right? So before I burn the whole rest of this, this um, I've told you how rockets propel themselves, um, a little bit about how once, once they get up into the, above, above the atmosphere, they, they can adopt a strategy that keeps them up there by going sideways really fast. Uh, really fast instantly is really fast. It's, uh, the number I remember is 17,000 miles per, per hour sideways to stay in near Earth orbit and not uh, make any, it, at constant altitude, about 17,000 miles an hour, which is seriously fast. Um, that speed will take you around the Earth about every 90 minutes. So orbits, low Earth orbits are 90 minute orbits. No, they've got no say in this. Um, they have to go that fast, not faster, not slower. If they go faster, they'll go out too far. Inertial wind. If they go slower, they'll land. They got to go at that speed, the dis you know, take that speed and divide it by the distance, or vice versa, and you get the, ti the time, 90 minutes. All right, here, here on, near the surface of the Earth, if you could, if you, you know, hi a hyperloop going all the way around the Earth here at, at ground level would take 84 minutes, I think. It would be, you'd do an orbit here. But okay, so show you some of the rockets that we've played with over the years. This one, of course, classic kid's toy. This rocket, the, the, what's gonna be thrown out by this rocket is water. So the fuel is water, it doesn't sound like a very chemically active, uh, high energy material, but it's got the mass you want to throw down. So this rocket will throw water down hard, and the water will in turn push up hard on the rocket and, and send it off. Of course, that water will carry away energy. Where's the energy going to come from to make it move fast? Compressed air. So I pump the air in. Oh, come on, seal. These things are made super high quality. 
<laughs> Someone's garage in China. Okay. Oh, don't do that again. And these usually say pump it three times, and I always pump it ten times. You know, more is better, right? Okay. Woo! There's another one. So if you try to do this with just air, it doesn't work very well because there's no mass to throw down. Yeah, it goes down fast. The air goes down fast, but it's got so little mass, it carries away very little momentum downward. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh. Oh well. <laughs> Not so important. Yeah, thanks. Um, this one's more fun. So this uses rocket fuel, also known as hairspray. It's, 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 I don't know, it's every physicist's standard rocket fuel. And so we've got a, a, a plastic bottle. The only difference between this and, and, apart from the label being missing, is there's a hole drilled in the end here. And what I'm going to do is I will put in the rocket fuel, which is liquid, and let it evaporate. One, two, that's supposedly the, the rule. Now I've got to let it evaporate. So this is going to be a mixture of, of uh, you know, essentially gasoline in the air. And uh, I'm going to light it. And it will get very hot. The pressure will surge upward, and the gas will shoot out here much faster than I can throw it. <laughs> Again, right? Right. <laughs> Many years ago. This apparatus has evolved. Alan lecture demo has, has improved it a lot. It, it used to be more down here. And there was a guy, a, a diver actually from the swim team. I had, I had people come up and do this, which is, I should have done today anyway, but I, I didn't. So he lit it off down here. And the cap blew off and hit him in the arm. And it made a donut on his arm. It was there for weeks. <laughs> So when he was diving, you can see this impact injury. Lots of momentum, short impulse. Short time, big force, yeah, it hurt. OK. Here you go. Oh, i got to put it on the nozzle. Sorry. Get... OK. Here we go. Ready? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> <laughs> and re-entry, and the astronauts are healthy. All right. Uh, the kayak strokes. Is it better to use more kayak strokes? Oops, I, it, things moved around here. I don't know. So with all these. The, these, these, the, the water sports, the more, air, the more water you can grab and throw backwards, which you do with paddles and stuff, uh, the more energy efficient your propulsion becomes, because you give the water less energy when you move a lot of it slowly than it, a little of it fast. Oh, but anyway, so back to rockets in, the, in, in these ones. There we, you know, over the years, we made a bunch of others. There, there's a, a cart that we'll do next, next week. Uh, but in the meantime, you know, fly across the room. I'll let one of you guys do that, or two of you guys do that. Fly across the room in a rocket cart. Um, but that can wait until Wednesday. In the meantime, have a nice break, and see you next Wednesday. <laughs>